Hello, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Claire, I'm a mum to one little girl. I've got a second one on the way. I like doing videos on food shopping, cooking, home stuff, all of those things. If you have watched any of my Meals of the Week videos before, you will know that I'm a big fan of a slow cooker for lots and lots of reasons. But in this delightful financial climate that we find ourselves in these days, they've become even more valuable in my kitchen. So in this video, I'm gonna challenge myself to use my slow cookers, yes, cookers more than one, in ways I haven't used them before to really make sure that I'm getting the most value out of them. Are they actually cheaper to run? Yes, I found several articles. I'll link one below. Um, I think the article I'm quoting from here is from the Metro. So, you know, do your own research because questionable news sources. Yes, they are actually cheaper to run. The average slow cooker apparently uses about the same amount of electricity as a light bulb. It uses roughly a tenth of mo the electricity that most electric ovens would use to cook. So it is a tiny fraction. The article that I'm going to link below says that to use a slow cooker to cook a meal costs around 16 pence. That may have changed now as prices have kept increasing, but long story short, they are cheaper than ovens. The initial investment is not that much either, or it doesn't have to be. Now you can go and buy fancy all singing, all dancing, techno gadget things that have buttons and timers and, and all sorts of things. Or I bought this in 2015, I think, uh, or thereabouts, from Amazon for about 25 quid. It's Crock-Pot brand. You can see it's been well loved because the label's rubbed off it. It is six and a half litres, this huge beast, which means it's great for doing batch cooking or, or large meals or whole chickens, whole roasts. You can do whatever you like in it. It's flipping huge. So that was about 25 quid and cost per use were literally down to probably 10 pence per use by this point because I used it so much over the last seven years. If you really are struggling to get your hands on one and money really is a factor, think about going second hand. This is a little tiny 1.5 litre one. It's super, super useful. I bought it from Facebook Marketplace for five pounds. You can quite often get them in charity shops. If you go to one that sells electrical goods, British Heart Foundation, they're normally a really good one in the UK for getting electrical goods because not all charity shops do sell things that are pat tested. Um, you can normally pick up a slow cooker uh, for very little money. Now I'm not delusional. I know they're not good for everything. There are certain things that you can't do in a slow cooker, at least not one of these basic ones anyway. If you love your chicken with crispy skin, you can't do it. You'll need to cook uh, whatever it is that you've cooked in there afterwards under the grill in order to get that crispiness to it. Also, if you want to sear your meat beforehand, which a lot of recipes recommend to get a better depth of flavour, better colour, you can't do that in one of these slow cookers. You would need to heat up a pan on the stove. And clearly, well, that's not the point. The point is, A, we just want to save money by using this one appliance. And also, it's really convenient to just throw everything in one pot and have one thing to wash up and not faff about. So nine times out of ten, I, I don't do those steps. I just accept that we're not going to get the crispy skin on the roast chicken or whatever, and that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Now, traditionally, slow cookers are associated with autumn, winter comfort foods, stews, soups, things like that. And I do use these for that all the time but I want to try doing some different things that I haven't done before. So I'm gonna try making some desserts. I've tried recently doing jacket potatoes in the slow cooker, that's worked really well. And I'm just gonna try out some new recipes and see how we get on. So let's have a play and see what works. In an effort to use my slow cooker more, I'm trying to make sure that I don't just use it for recipes because then you're kind of restricted to just using it when you can be bothered. And I cannot always be bothered. Sometimes you just need to do really quick and easy things. So I'm going to make some sweet potatoes to go with some, is it chilli? Is it bolognese? It's something that I've pulled out of my freezer. Who knows? Mystery Tupperware. Let's get these in the slow cooker. So uh, these have been washed. I haven't done anything else to them. You don't need to prick them. You don't need to do anything at all, but wrap them individually in tin foil. What are you doing, Morpheus? So I have all three in my tiny little baby slow cooker. Um, I suppose there's nothing to stop you doing a big batch of these if you're into meal prep and that sort of thing. 
So uh, there we go. I'm going to plug this in. And if I were an organised person, I would have done this this morning and they could have just sat on low all day. Uh, but I'm not. And so it's about lunchtime. I'm going to stick this on high and they should be ready for dinner. No liquid or anything at the bottom. Literally sweet potato in some tin foil in the slow cooker. Done. Now I've made rice pudding before in the slow cooker and it's lovely, but I've never made any other desserts. So I thought it would be fun to have a go at making some bread and butter pudding, British classic. And uh, I've never actually made it before. So we're gonna give it a go in the baby crock pot. Ignore this. This is dinner for tonight and making some meatballs. So let's uh, have a go, shall we? Right, so my crock pot is on this rather fabulous hey all you cool cats and kittens um, glass thing to stop my wooden countertops from getting damaged because why not? Um, I'm just going to very quickly grease it with some butter. I was quite surprised, although this is often called bread and butter pudding, there's not actually a lot in the way of butter. It's more of an eggy custard situation. So there's that. Hopefully that will stop things from sticking too, too much. What I have here is some crusty bread. This is about two thirds of a Warburton's gluten-free tiger bloomer. Now gluten-free bread never lasts well. And this has started to go a bit stale. I don't think I'm going to fit the whole thing in here. So let's chop a bit off. I'm not going to slice this up and get it all fancy. I'm just going to go rogue. Just chunk it up in there. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> that went so well. <laughs> okay. Um, let's pretend that didn't happen. It's a good job my counter is clean. The recipe calls for a couple of handfuls of raisins. I think this will do. If I just kind of shuggle them around in there, then uh, they'll be distributed, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, now for the sort of custody bit of it, uh, what I need is two eggs. all fingers and thumbs today. It is not going well for me. The recipe calls for 400 mils of milk. I'm probably going to go slightly over that. It's my actual measuring jug is in the wash. Close enough. Rogue raisin. for two tablespoons of sugar. Funnily enough, this sugar's in a bag because I split that packet as well. Now the recipe only calls for cinnamon and um, I want to add a bit more. So I'm going to add some vanilla. Why not? A quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So I'm feeling festive. I'm going to do a good teaspoon of cinnamon. I've done that made there, come on, get it together, woman. Half teaspoon of ginger ish. So, now what you do is pour this over your bread. Maybe I should have used more bread. I don't know. Oh, that's the thing about trying recipes. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out for next time. Maybe it'll just all absorb up. Give it a little squish. Now, apparently the trick to this, I'm just gonna 
finagle these raisins a little bit um, so that you don't have a horribly soggy top um, and you get something resembling a, a crispy brown top is to cover it with a clean tea towel to kind of catch any condensation. Not something that I would do if I were going to be leaving the house, um, as I often do when I'm slow cooking. Not recommending that, I'm just saying I, I do it. But I am going to be here for the next couple of hours, crank it up to high, and let's see how it turns out. Okay, let's see how this has gone. It's been two hours. There is a lot of condensation on the lid, so maybe the tea towel was a wise choice. Oh, my days. Oh, that smells all kinds of good. I still have some left and it smells great. And I've added some custard. Seemed like the right thing to do. Let's see how it is. <laughs> okay. Um, everyone's eating it, so I think it's good. Do we like it? Yes. Do you like it? Mm. Yeah, okay. One of the cheapest ways to buy meat is to buy the whole thing. So rather than buying a tiny little plastic thing of chicken tenderloins or something like that, just buying the whole bird works out much cheaper. And what you can do, and what I frequently do do, is get the whole bird on offer. This was a little yellow sticker bag in there. Um, and process it yourself. So cut off the wings and the thighs and the breast and, and do all of that and keep the carcass. Um, you can do all of that and that's great, but it's a bit of a faff. So sometimes if I don't really want to roast dinner, but I do want the chicken from it, we break out the big boy again. That sounded wrong. Again, much, much cheaper to do this than to put it in the oven and roast it that way. And it's super, super easy. So I, I use a couple of onions cut into halves as basically a trivet to keep the chicken off the very base of the pan. I don't bother adding any liquid or any oils or anything because the chicken will basically create all of that itself. I don't tend to do too much in the way of seasoning either because I will use this in lots of different dishes so I don't want to affect the flavour of it too, too much. And you stand it on your trivet. Now, I will preface this by saying this chicken is going to look anemic. It will taste great and it will be beautifully tender, but it won't have a crispy skin because you can't do it in this slow cooker. But that is the sacrifice I'm willing to make. We'll be fine. I will add some seasonings. I've got some onion powder. Yes, I'm still using up this onion powder. A little bit of salt. Not a lot. Not much. And a tiny little bit. That's too much. It's not really. Yeah. Some black pepper as well. And all you do is bob your lid on, try and make sure that the legs aren't sticking up and holding the, the lid up. And bear in mind, this is an extra large chicken, by the way. So a full extra large chicken is fitting in the six and a half litre slow cooker. I pop it on high for an hour or two just to get everything going and then you switch it down to low and you leave it all day. So we'll come back to this this evening. Doesn't that look lovely? It's a shame it's a stock photo but here's the one I made. It doesn't quite have the lovely crispy skin uh, but it's worked really really well. And you will see that the meat like, well, for a start, you see how much liquid there is in there. This is why you don't need to add any at all. This is all just fat and juices from the chicken. And look how tender this is. It just comes away from the carcass. There is absolutely no pressure required. It's brilliant. So now I have enough cooked chicken to put in whatever I want to put it in. You can have it with your roast chicken dinner. You can put it in a stir fry. Whatever you want. It's already cooked. I should um, specify as well that I never throw away the carcasses without using them as well. Figure out if we're going to eat meat, we should use the whole animal. It's kind of a thing for me. 
So what I do is I wait until I've got three chicken carcasses and I freeze them in my deep freezer in, in freeze bags. Don't know why I needed to clarify that. Um, and once I've got three, I pop it back in this very slow cooker with carrots and onions and celery and black whole peppercorns, apple cider vinegar, bay leaves, whatever other aromatics I fancy using at the time. And um, leave it on overnight for at least 12 hours and then you get the most incredible stock. And you might have had homemade soup, but you haven't had homemade soup until you've had it with proper homemade stock. It's amazing. Okay, soup is a total no-brainer in the slow cooker and it's half past seven on Sunday morning. I want to have cauliflower cheese soup for lunch. So we're gonna get everything in. So we have, the coffee is not for the soup, the coffee is for me. We have some onions that I chopped and froze a while ago. I'll put some of those in. Two cauliflower that need using. They'll go in stems and all. I will remove the leaves and chop them up, obviously. Um, a wee bit of milk, a couple of carrots, um, all of this sad celery, including leaves, etc. Rogue half a leek that I found in the fridge that can go in. No harm in chucking a parsnip in as well. Might throw in a couple of potatoes just to thicken everything up and a couple of stock cubes. Let's get to it. Okay, Freya, can you put whatever's in that bowl in that bowl? And put the stock cube in the stove cooker. Well done, thank you. There's another one. Yeah, you're doing a good job there. If anyone's wondering how I managed to get so much cooking done with a toddler running around the house, this is how. A Montessori style stool and get them involved. It's fun. Not gonna lie, sometimes your dishes come out with more dribble in them than the recipe indicated. The key with slow cooker cooking is don't put in too much liquid because none of the liquid is going to evaporate or very, very little of it. So everything is going to sink down in its own juices and, and stew for a while anyway. Um, you don't need to put the celery in the milk, that's fine. Everyone has clean hands, I should stress this. <laughs> It's taken us half an hour to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick it on high for an hour. Possibly leave it on high the whole time. It will all collapse down into itself. Okay, this is now several hours later, uh, which is the joy of a slow cooker because it's very difficult to overcook things. But, you know, we've given it a go today. We ended up going for a surprise trip out with friends. Which is lovely. It does mean that this has long overdue some attention, but I'm not concerned. Remember, folks, everything is soup if you have a blender. Let's add some cheese. How much cheese? All of it. If that looks like a ridiculous amount of cheese, try and remember that this is a six and a half litre slow cooker. So this is a huge quantity of soup. And it freezes really well, so... Okay, so the purpose of this video was to try out some new things, to prompt myself and you to use your slow cooker for more than just the odd casserole here and there, and to really get our money's worth out of them, because they are a, a really inexpensive way of doing lots of things. So please let me know down below what your favourite things to do with a slow cooker are. And thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed and want to see more slow cooker recipes, I do do a Meals of the Week video every week and there's normally at least one get snuck in there. Thank you. Bye.